In this video, we're going to look at an optimization problem. And the problem is to find the point on the graph of y squared equals 2x that is closest to the point 1, 4. So here we have the graph of y squared equals 2x right here. And we have the point 1, 4. And so we want to say move or walk from the point 1, 4 to this, say it's a, some kind of path. Right? We want to take the shortest distance. This is going to be like a perpendicular line to the tangent line here. And we want to find what is the shortest distance. Probably somewhere there, right? I mean, we probably somewhere around here. We wouldn't want to walk like this way. That's going to be a longer distance. So we want to find the coordinates of this point. This is what we're looking for. This point right here. What are the coordinates of that point? All right, so let's look at what we know. We know that um, this distance right here we need to minimize. And that's the key with these kind of problems is you want to figure out what you want to minimize. So we want to minimize the distance between the point 1, 4 and some point on the graph. So let's go ahead and, and label this point on the graph. So we know that this is going to be some x, y coordinate right here, right? But we also know that y squared equals 2x. So we have a couple choices here. We want to get this down to one variable. Um, if we substitute for x, since y squared has to equal 2x, if we divide both sides by 2, we learn that x has to be 1 half of y squared. We could use that for our point. Um, if we decide to keep the x the same, and solve this for y if we took y squared equals 2x. We'd have to take the square root of both sides, right? Which is usually plus or minus the square root of 2x. But from our diagram, it's safe to say that we're going to be, we would be using the positive part of this. So we could use that for our point. So it's up to you at this juncture whether you want to use the point 1 half y squared y or x and square root of 2x. I am going to go ahead and use this one in the video here, but it might be good experimenting to try the other one as you work through this. So we want to minimize the distance between the point 1, 4 and the point 1 half y squared comma y. So that means that we're going to need to write a formula for distance. Well, if you remember your distance formula, that's going to be the square root of the x value minus the x value. And again, it doesn't matter what order you do these in. I'm going to go ahead and do 1 half y squared minus 1 squared. And then the y value minus the y value. And I'm using y value to mean the second coordinate. All right, so we're taking the first coordinate minus the first coordinate. And then the second coordinate minus the second coordinate. And that will give us the distance. All right, so now if we want to minimize this, that means we want to take the derivative and set it to 0 and try to find a minimum value here. Now, you might notice taking the derivative of this thing is kind of brutal, right? So you've got a square root, and you're going to have to use a power rule and a chain rule. So there's a little trick with these optimization problems with distance. And that is to go ahead and square both sides to get rid of this square root. And to think, if I could minimize the value of d squared, then I'll minimize whatever the square root of that is. Right? Whatever the minimum value is for d squared, it would certainly be the minimum value for d. So I'm going to just substitute some variable in there for d. I'm going to say, oh, I don't know, let g equal d squared and minimize g. So if I could find the smallest possible value of g, that's going to tell me the smallest possible value of d, because I can just take the square root of it and get the smallest possible value for d, uh, and minimize g. All right, so now I have g equals 1 half y squared minus 1 squared plus y minus 4 squared. All right, so to minimize g, now we need to find the derivative of g with respect to y. So we could actually think of g here as a function of y. 
and d is a function of y up here as well. All right, so let's take the derivative of g with respect to y. So we're going to use our power rule. And then we have to use our chain rule. We have to take the derivative of this inside piece here. That looks to be y. 2 times a half is 1. And then the derivative of negative 1 is just 0. Plus, bring the 2 down in front. New exponent is 1. The derivative of the inside here is just 1. So I'll write it for posterity, but um, we don't have to write that. All right, let's see what we've got here. Let's simplify this. I'm going to distribute the 2 and the y into this parenthesis here. So I'm going to get y cubed minus 2y plus 2y minus 8. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so that those two y's are going to cancel out, and I'm just going to get y cubed equals 8. So remember, to find the minimum value, we need to find our critical point. So we're going to set this equal to 0. So if I add the 8 over and take the cubed root, I'm going to get y equals 2. So that tells me y equals 2. That's looking pretty good for this point I have up here, right? Just by kind of estimating, it looked like 2 would be the correct y value. And it is. All right, so if I take 2 to find my x value now, all I'd have to do is take 2 and plug it into my formula. So the formula for my parabola is y squared equals 2x. So if y is 2, I get 4 equals 2x, x equals 2. So the point I'm looking for is 2, 2. And that is the point that minimizes the distance. Pretty cool. Now, if we wanted to find the actual distance, if we wanted to find the smallest distance, then we would just use the distance formula and um, use the distance formula with 1, 4, and 2, 2 and work it out. Or you could plug y back up in here into the distance formula. Let's just go ahead and get that minimum distance just to have it. So the minimum distance would be the square root of 2 minus 1 squared plus 2 minus 4 squared which is the square root of 1 plus 4 or square root 5. So that's the minimum distance. Now one thing I didn't do here to check and see if this was indeed a minimum is check the first derivative. Um, I was pretty confident by my diagram here that y equals 2 was my shortest distance. But just in case this is something you need review on to check and see if it's a max or a min, let's go do that. So to check and see if 2 is a maximum or a minimum, we got y equals 2 from this, you can look at your first derivative for certain values of y. So we know if y is 2, that the first derivative is 0. So let's say, what if y was 3? So if I plug 3 into my derivative, I'm going to get 3 cubed minus 8, which is 27 minus 8, which is a positive number. If I plug in 1 into my derivative, I am going to get 1 cubed minus 8, which is a negative number. So that means that my function is decreasing here, and then it gets to 2, and I have a derivative of 0. And then on the other side of 2, it's increasing. So this tells me that I have a minimum value at 2.